Welcome to Let the Front End Speak. I'm Aisha, your host. Have you ever wondered what life must be like as a journalist? Always on the go, staying apprised of hot button issues, being aware of the inner workings of news media. But let's add one more layer. What is life like as a young hijab wearing Muslim woman working for Canada's largest newspaper? Let's sit down with Noor Javed, an award winning reporter with the Toronto Star to get her perspective on life as a Muslim journalist. Welcome to the show, Noor. Thanks. So I was wondering if you could take us through your day uh, as a journalist. Every morning, I guess I get to work. Um, usually uh, when I, now that I cover my own beat, I kind of figure out what stories I want to do myself. And um, so this is a little bit different, but when I was an intern, um, I would come in, um, usually I would have listened to the radio or looked at you know, Twitter or Facebook to see what's kind of going on. Um, and then when you get in, your uh, assignment editor will say, okay, well this is happening, you know, there's a police briefing, there is a shooting, there is um, this announcement at a hospital. So depending on that, um, you'll get assigned a story. Uh, usually, um, they'll, uh, they'll give you a sense of how much interest there is, like, okay, we want to have it on for our website, we want to have it um, um, you know, in the paper, um, and then based on that, you'll you'll know. Okay, you know, I have to file it by like four thirty, five o'clock. So it is like this, you know, kind of really intense deadline. Um, um, and now for me, it's a bit different because I will come in, I'll say, okay, you know, I have all these story ideas, and I'll talk to my editor. Or we'll we'll make a list, and then um, I'll have you know a certain time to kind of ro work on them. So for more of a featurey kind of thing. Um, but if I'm like if I'm covering you know a council meeting or something or talking to a mayor, there's a big announcement. I also have those deadline pressures. So you know it's really like you get a story at nine or ten o'clock and you have to have it done by five or six o'clock on the same day. On the same day. Wow. Um, and so it's quite intense, but it really is. Um, it's so exciting. Like you go to work and like you're never really bored because you know, you're constantly working on something new. Um, you get to meet so many different people. Like. Um, you know, I, I really like enjoy my job. I, the hardest thing is like you know having to write it such a in a, such a quick amount of time. Usually, that's probably usually the hardest thing. But and also if you know if you're out on an assignment or at a shooting or something, and they'll be like, hey, can you file like five paragraphs for our website and oh, like wow. on your phone and you have <laughs> it's going to be on a website. People are going to read it. Like just the things have changed so much even while I've been there because when I got there there was no Facebook or Twitter and now it's like. It's real just, time. Yeah, it's real right? time. And they really expect you to be doing it real time. And all they'll be like, hey, you're going to be at this thing. Can you cover it on Twitter? And so you're, you know, you're covering it on Twitter. So you're writing like what's happening in 120 characters. And um, it's really changed like the news, how it works now. And um, a lot more responsibility as a reporter because you have to be, you know, accurate and fair. And so I guess, you know, just from that, you can see how difficult it is then, like, if these reporters are writing about these really intense issues, like terrorism and, like, you know, a, ter a hostage situation, things like that, you have all these, like, daily pressures and then these, like, real-time pressures, and then you're expected to, like, write about a community that you don't no know nothing about. So, like, that's what I think Muslims have to realize, that, like, you know, journalists are, like, really on just like th they're on this like time crunch and it's just the nature of we call it like you know the the, the beast right like you just have to kind of um, you have to beat your competitors right and so people are uh, people are doing this like they're writing quickly and um, sometimes they make mistakes so it's in uh, you mentioned you know that you t have to cover often there are times where you're covering a lot of hot button issues and some of the work that you've done you recently I think you also worked on an Articles sp specifically like within the Muslim community lens about you know the issue of poverty within the Muslim community, um, you know issue of uh, the face covering. So I'm just wondering what kind of you know being a reporter. I'm sure you're objective. You you would have to be objective and cover mm -hmm. both sides of the story. How has that impacted sort of the way the Muslim your relationship with the Muslim community? Mm -hmm. um, so. I guess there's like multi parts of your question, so I'll yeah, just add <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> so, so generally, like I, my, uh, unless there's something like you know really big going on, like if all the imams are gathering to ne denounce terrorism or something, like they'll say that that would be something that you know someone might get assigned to cover. Usually at this stage, they don't ask me anymore. I've been there long enough that they won't just put the Muslim on the Muslim story um, anymore. So, which is what it used to happen, um, but. So now it's kind of like I will, I will say, okay, you know, there's this really great story, I think, in the Muslim community, we should do it. Or um, I got this email, someone should do this, you know. So a lot of the really kind of 
I would just say positive, but like really story, intense or thinking kind of stories that you might see in the Toronto Star. Uh, either like I have written them or people, I've pitched them to people. Um, and so that's, I'm lucky that I don't have to, I'm not like assigned a Muslim story. I'm not assigned like I do five Muslim stories a year or something like that. Like it, I have an interest myself in writing about our community. There aren't that many people writing about our community. There's so many issues within our community that are going on. Um, one, of the, one that you mentioned is the poverty issue. That was like one of the first stories I wrote actually when I was at the Star um, because, you know, I was just, it still shocks me actually at like um, the level of poverty that is within our community and how our community is really, uh, the demographics are really changing. Um, it, it, it is difficult though and one of the challenges um, and one of the reasons why I've kind of stopped writing so many is because. So many Muslim focused <coughs> articles. So many Muslim focused articles, yeah. Is um, partly because I find that it's a very kind of intensive thing for me. You know, I, I feel like I have to be overly objective and I feel like I have to be like overly careful because, because I don't want to give the perception mm -hmm. that you know I'm being biased. I'll oftentimes I'll write a story and then I'll like send it to like five of my colleagues and be like be critical, tell me if it seems that I'm being biased, you know, change it and I, I do that almost all the time for any of my kind of Muslim pieces because I don't want to have anyone ever say to me you know there was bias on story because um, because I've had people accuse me of that like oh you know you wear a headscarf so you're a really pro headscarf kind of thing. Um, and, you know, I do probably have an extra challenge, um, but at the same time, you know, I just call people out on it. I say, you know, why are you coming after me? If a Jewish person wrote a story about, you know, a Jewish issue, you wouldn't really go after them. Or if a Christian person writes stories about Christian things all the time, we don't go after them in the same way. So um, there is that extra level of challenge as a visible Muslim. Do you find that there is an interest, um, especially from the non-Muslim community about, you know, because I mean, I talk about, you know, issues like this and I have a lot of non-Muslim friends and they're just intrigued by it. So I'm just wondering, was that how did you ever get or do you often get response from the non-Muslim community and is there an interest for that? Yeah, you know, uh, I, a lot of times I've, when I have written stories about Muslim issues, I'll get um, pretty nice emails from people saying, you know, thank you for explaining this to me. Um, I remember years ago I wrote about like Ramadan and like how, you know, it affects someone. I, I kind of featured a person and like went through this like whole spiritual and mental journey of, with him. And this person emailed me and said, wow, this was such a great explanation of Ramadan. I didn't know. Um, I covered Hajj a few years ago. And um, I got a lot of response to that. Uh, you know, those stories I did, people were like really, um, they're like, you know, it was really nice to read a personal account of Hajj that was, uh, it w some people were felt really moved by it. And this is all from non-Muslims, right? Yeah, a, a lot of it's from non-Muslims. Uh, Muslims often respond to, sometimes it's like, they're not happy with what I've written. Um, but you know, you know I've, I've learned from some of my mentors in the newsroom quite early on that uh, as a journalist, you have to develop a very thick skin. Um, you have to realize that you're not really writing for anyone. As long as you write uh, fairly, if you write, uh, you know, if you write, uh, your facts are right and you're writing without any biases, like really that's all you can do, right? People are always going to take from what the story what they want. You can't, you can't do anything about that. So how can we, you know, you mentioned you know, there are these positive stories that you've written about like Hajj and the Ramadan series and it's, you know, it's painted a positive image of, of Muslims, right? So how can we continue to, you know, foster that narrative, especially now when, you know, it seems like mm -hmm. every other day in the news there's one more thing against mm -hmm. Muslims. So just to clarify, like I don't only write positive Muslim stories. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, like, I have to be really clear because people will say to me, why aren't you only writing positive stories? And I think hey, I'm not like, I can't be the cheerleader for the Muslim community, right? Like yes. the Muslim community has to do their own job in like cheering for themselves yes. in a way, right? Yeah. Um, there's a big gap in our understanding of how to engage with the media. I haven't worked in media organizations for so long. Um, you know, I have seen that um, generally the, the Muslim community is very reactive. They're not like proactive. Um, there, there is some attempt. There are some attempts now to be more proact proactive, but um, I think they, there still is like a disconnect in terms of number one, like you know, people say, why do you always have the same voices, or why do you have these bad experts, you know, in your stories or on TV? And a lot of like I spoke about before is that you know journalists are on these very intense deadlines. Though in the morning, if I have an, a story that I know it's going to be have to finish that day, I'll email like ten people. Whoever responds to me, it gets in my story. It gets in my story, right? So it's not about like I'm not going to pick and choose. Okay, this person is really anti-Muslim, so let's put them in the story. It's like mostly like who gets back to you. That's really what it's about. Um, so the number one thing like I found is like I'll email a mosque or I'll email an imam about a story 
um, imams are actually in their defense have gotten a lot better recently, but um, in the past, you know, or an organization, and it'll be like days before someone gets back to me. Like that just it doesn't work. It doesn't work in the media environment that now exists. Um, and number two, like we just don't know how to like engage with the media. You know, the Muslim community is doing so many great things now. Like, you know, I hear about all the time how there these mosques and congregations are donating to hospitals. You know, I know people go out every weekend and give out food and they give out clothes and they do so many great things. And it's like, why are we these stories not being told? Um, and a lot of it is just because we, uh, the Muslim community, doesn't know how to like, you know, take that first step. Like, and uh, I've I've spoken to a number of people and said, you know, you guys need to work on writing a press release. You know, send a, a, a friendly journalist that you know an email. Um, there are a, a lot of things that we could be doing. And if you are scared to do that, like at least leverage social media. You know, uh, so many of stories that we get are from social media. So if you put something on YouTube that's really funny and crazy and like interesting. Like mainstream media will follow you and they're going to come to you and say, oh my God, I saw this great thing that you wrote on social media or you did on social media. Um, can I talk to you? Can I interview you? And I think we just, we're still, for some reason, the Muslim community is still not really getting it, you know? And um, I, I, I'm, I'm hopeful though. I think that this new generation is like, you know, is getting the social media part of it. And I, I think that will hopefully transfer to mainstream media. But I feel like there still is um, a lot of work to be done. This is very helpful, and we have, you know, that we have you on the show, so we'll share your email, so hopefully you'll get bombarded. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> Thank you very Only much. Only nice emails, yes. please. <laughs> Thank you Thank so much you. for having me.